In this question from 1994 AP Physics 1, they modified it a little bit, but the question says a ball of mass 0.5 kilogram initially at rest is kicked directly toward the fence from a point 0.32 meters away as shown in the picture above. The velocity of the ball as it leaves the kicker's foot is 20 meters per second at an angle of 37 degrees above the horizontal. The top of the fence is 2.5 meters high. The ball hits nothing while in flight and air resistance is negligible. Determine the time it takes for the ball to reach the plane of the fence. And then will the ball hit the fence? If so, how far below the top of the fence will it hit? And if not, how far above the top um, of the fence will it pass? And then they provide you the axis um, to sketch the horizontal and vertical components of the velocity of the ball as a function of time until the ball reaches the plane of the fence. So let's look at these questions. And to calculate the um, horizontal and vertical components of the initial velocity. So I'm going to make uh, blue is horizontal velocity and green is your vertical velocity. So from that triangle, maybe I'm going to redraw this triangle over here. So I have blue and I have vertical green. And this is initial velocity, which is uh, 20 meters per second. And the angle is given, and they also give you what sine and cosine and tangent are, and we're going to call this angle theta. So from, um, if this is Vy, and if this is Vx, I can write that um, cosine of theta is equal to Vx over 20, or vx is equal to 20 cosine and theta is 20, uh, 37 degrees. So that will give me 16 meters per second. And the same I'm going to do for vy. So sine of theta is equal to vy over 20. So vy is equal to 20 sine of 37 and sine is 0.6 and 0.6 times 12 20 will give me 12 meters per second so here i have 12 meters per second for the vertical velocity and i have 16 meters per second for horizontal velocity horizontal and vertical component of the initial velocity Next, using the distance from where the ball was to where the ball is going to the fence, we see that the distance is 32 meters. And in order to figure out the time, how long it will take traveling at the horizontal velocity of 16 meters per second to travel that distance, uh, we can use the distance formula. So the distance formula, the horizontal distance formula is going to be the um, average velocity times the time. And velocity on X doesn't change. So horizontal velocity has no forces acting forward without um, air being, or, or with the air being negligible. So we can say that the distance, which is 32 meters, is equal to average velocity on X is gonna stay 16 and constant and then the time. So the time it's gonna take to reach the fence is two seconds. And I believe that was the first question that they ask you, how long it will take for the ball to reach the fence. For the next question, they ask you, um, will the ball hit the fence? If so, how far below or how far above uh, will it be when it passes over the fence? So I have, um, Initial velocity vertical or vertical component is 12 meters per second. And it will take for the ball to reach its highest point at um, 1.2 seconds. So if this is the trajectory of the ball, it will take the ball to reach um, its highest point 1.2 seconds. And let me show you how I find this number. 
So here is going to be somewhere here is the highest point, halfway in between um, the place where it would land. And um, does not mean it's going to be 16 meters because 16 meters, um, it has to be full projectile. So if the ball continued flying, and I do not know if it's going to be above the fence or not or below yet, uh, but then halfway through the parabola would be halfway through. But the 32 meters that they give you is not halfway through. So I'm not going to be assuming that it hits the fence or doesn't yet because we still have to do those calculations. So let me show you how I find the time it's going to take for the ball to reach the highest point. I know acceleration due to gravity is 10 meters per second squared. And vertical velocity initial is 12 meters per second, but the vertical final velocity all the way on the top is going to be zero. Horizontal velocity does not change, so horizontal velocity, um, 16 meters per second, is going to stay the same all the way through the whole path. But the vertical velocity is changing because the force of gravity is acting on uh, the ball and it slows down as it goes up and eventually it stops and starts falling down because due to acceleration due to gravity or due to force of gravity. So if I'm calculating the time, I know that acceleration is equal to change of the velocity over the time. If I want to find the time, it's going to be a change of the velocity over the acceleration. So the time to get to the top is going to be equal to final velocity, which is vertical velocity zero, all the way on the top, minus initial velocity, which is 12 divided by the deceleration, because we're losing the velocity uh, each second, so negative 10, and that will give me 1.2 seconds. So I know the ball is going to reach its highest point in 1.2 seconds. So if I call this height the highest point the ball is going to reach, um, h, then I can calculate that height as average vertical velocity times the time and the vertical velocity is 12 meters per second so the average is going to be um, initial velocity is 12 and final all the way on the top vertically vertical velocity is going to be zero and 12 and zero average will give me six meters per second times the time to get all the way on the top is one point two seconds and gives me 7.2 meters so the highest point the ball is going to reach is 7.2 meters and it's going to take the ball 1.2 seconds to reach the highest point and it's going to take the ball two seconds to reach the fence knowing that i can say that the time that is left to reach the fence from the point where the ball reached its highest point is going to take 0.8 seconds. So if the ball is at its highest point, so I'm going to redraw the picture right here. If the ball is at its highest point, this is the height of 7.2 meters. And then it's going to travel for 0.8 seconds before it reaches the fence. Then I can calculate the distance the ball falls in 0.8 seconds. So this distance, I'm going to call it little h or lowercase h, is equal to the average velocity of the ball times the time it's going to travel. Initial velocity of the ball is 0. And the final velocity of the ball in 0.8 seconds is going to be 8 meters per second. Divided by 2 times the time, which is 0.8. And that will give me 3.2 meters. And let me show you how I know that the velocity of the ball is going to be 8 meters per second in 0.8 seconds. So when the ball falls down from the height, the highest point, it has initial vertical velocity is zero. If I want to find the final vertical velocity, I take initial vertical velocity plus the acceleration times the time. I have initial vertical velocity all the way at the highest point, 0, minus the acceleration due to gravity is 10, and the time is 0.8 seconds. So that gives me negative 8 meters per second. So the ball is going to have 8 meters per second down, the negative sign, when it travels uh, from the highest point to the point where it has, um, there is fence. So it will travel 3.2 meters down by the time it gets 
to the fence. So from the height of 7.2, it will travel 3.2 meters down. So from the height of 7.2, it will travel 3.2 meters down. So that height right here, 3.2 meters. That means that the height above the ground, this one, is going to be h minus 3.2. So h is 7.2 minus 3.2 and gives me 4 meters. So the ball is going to be 4 meters above the ground by the time it reaches the fence. So the ball is going to be 4 meters above the ground by the time it reaches the fence. And that means that the ball is going to be 1.5 meters above the ground, the fence. So the distance right here is going to be 1.5 meters above the fence. So for the second question in this problem, they ask you, will the ball hit the fence? If so, how far below the top it will hit the fence? And if not, how far above the top the fence will it pass? So the ball is going to be passing above the fence 1.5 meters above. So here I redrew everything so it looks a little bit clearer and cleaner. So the highest point is 7.2 meters. The, uh, the position of the ball against the ground in uh, two seconds is going to be four meters which is 1.5 meters above the fence and for the next question they ask you on the axis below sketch the horizontal and vertical components of the velocity of the ball as function of time until the ball reaches the plane of the fence so for horizontal velocity, horizontal velocity doesn't change and we said that horizontal velocity is 16 meters per second. So we will keep 16 meters per second um, for the whole path and the whole path is uh, 2 seconds. So horizontal velocity is going to stay 16 meters per second and not change. And also because it takes 1.2 seconds to get to the top, of the highest uh, vertical position um, then it's going to take 1.2 seconds before it falls on the ground so 2.4 seconds before it hits the ground so you could continue um, the line for horizontal velocity until 2.4 seconds somewhere right here but they don't ask you to do that they ask you to do it only until the point it passes the fence and that happens at two seconds so at two seconds it will pass the fence and then you have to stop so it's going to stay constant horizontal velocity because we neglect the air resistance so it will not change there is no forces acting on the ball horizontally so the velocity stays constant and then for the vertical velocity we start at positive 12 meters per second and at 1.2 second it reaches its highest point and has vertical velocity of zero so we have this straight line the slope of this line is negative 10 because the slope of the velocity graph is acceleration and acceleration due to gravity is negative 10 and negative uh, because it slows down as it moves up and then if i continue this straight line at two seconds i should have the velocity of negative eight that's the one that we calculated earlier and again i have to stop at two seconds because that's the time when the ball is going to be passing the fence and that is all i have for this question um 1994 ap physics b and thank you for watching i hope you learned i hope it helped you and if you like it go ahead and push the button like Thanks and see you in my future videos.